Ladies and gentlemen, I am excited to introduce you to a bit of circus history. One of the most famous aerialists of all time, the tale of Lillian Leitzel, as portrayed by the circus freak's very own Courtney Von Eus. I am Lillian Leitzel, queen of the air and the world's most marvelous gymnast. For those of you who are not familiar with my act, I climb up to the very top of the circus tent and reach out, just in reach, to a rope that is hanging from the ceiling. I keep my body straight and then I lift my feet over my head and I rotate around over and over and over and faster and faster and faster until I am just a tiny blur to the audience in the distance. And the audience is clapping 89, 90, 91, 92, always to 100, at least to 100, depending upon how my arm is feeling. And then I gracefully climb down and acknowledge the audience. I was not always Lillian Leitzel, though. I was actually born Leopoldina Alitza Pelican. I was born to a circus family in Germany. They used to travel around to the different villages to perform until my grandfather developed arthritis in his hands and could no longer perform, and the family was in a bad way. A man named Willie Dostick came by the house and offered to take my mother to travel around in his circus. Not knowing what else to do, my grandparents said, oh right, you take our daughter, but take good care of her. And he promised to do so. Unfortunately, Mr. Dosta would actually lock the children that he had collected in the back of his wagon. And if they didn't perform to the level that he expected, they would get whipped or even worse. And uh, even more unfortunate for my mother, Whenever she used to go to the restroom in the middle of the night, sometimes she was assaulted. And, and I guess here I am, nine months later. My brother also was born in that manner. But it wasn't all bad for my mother. She actually learned a lot from Willie Dosta. She learned trapeze and became very well-renowned in the area. So much so that we had a gentleman knocking on her door named Edward Leamy, who is a very popular agent around Europe. He wanted her to perform as one of the Leamy ladies. And so off she went to go perform, and I was left with my grandparents. And my mother did provide for me. She sent money and gifts, and I got the best education imaginable. I went to a classic school. I learned Latin. I played the piano. I danced. And about when I was eight or 10 years old, my mother sent me a pair of silver-plated Roman rings. And I knew I wanted to be just like her. She was performing for the queens and the kings all over Europe. And everybody loved her. And I knew that this was my way to become a star just like her. But I didn't know anything about Roman rings. And everybody's got to start somewhere, right?
And everybody loved my performance. It was a huge hit, and I kept practicing. And I became a permanent member of the Leamy Ladies. And one day, one fine day, a gentleman from, Mr. Who are from Ringling Brothers Circus came and found us. And he wanted us to be a part of the very first combined Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey show. And we were so excited. This was the first time we had ever performed in America. So we went, and at first, my, my aunt performed, and there was some tepid clapping. And then my mother performed, and again, not very exciting. So I did my, my bit on the trapeze, and I saw that there was a rope hanging down. And I thought to myself, you know what? We need to make an impression. We want to be back in America and have a place in the American circus. So I reached out to the rope that was nearby, and I decided that I was going to do my signature move. And I flipped over and over and over again. And as we were going, I just kept taking bobby pins out of my hair. And nobody really knew what was going on until the very end, when I just stopped. And there was dead silence. We didn't know what, what that meant. And then everybody just burst into applause. <laughs> year and while we didn't actually travel with the circus as our contraption the trapeze rotaire needed actual mounting on the ceiling we did come back for the next few years to perform with Ringling until my mother had an issue with Mr. Leamy. He and her disagreed about money. She thought that he was taking too big of a cut, and he also, she also didn't like the fact that I was starting to become the star of the show instead of her, and you might remember that she's only 12 years older than I am, so she's still in her prime of her performing life. But needless to say, she just didn't want to perform with me anymore, so she went off to Europe and performed as the stripping aerial Venus. Well, I decided I was going to go to New York and see if I could find a job. Because as a soloist, I did not really have a place in Ringling yet. I was not proven. So I traveled around, and I finally found a, a person who would give me a job. And it was on the vaudeville circuit, and I actually went to northern New York. And I actually slept and worked on a train, a livestock train. And I used to perform four shows a day, and in between, I would do chores, I would clean up after the cows, and then I would sleep on the hay in the train. It was exhausting, absolutely exhausting. Lucky for me, it didn't take too long for somebody on Broadway to actually come and find me and pair me up with another lady. And of course, I sort of took over the show as I tend to do. And it was a great experience being on Broadway. I knew everybody, W.C. Fields, um, Charlie Chaplin, I met a lot of really amazing performers and people. And let's see. Then there was Alexis. Alexis was a tango dancer. So suave, so good looking. He was just amazing. Except for the fact that, yeah, he was not all what he said to be. He promised me the moon, and we got married after a month, which was a little naive on my part. And he promised me this great hotel for this honeymoon, and instead we went to his hole-in-the-wall apartment and decided that he was going to quit his job so that I could support him. Ha! Huh. And his mistresses, let me remind you of that. Anyways, luckily, soon I had a, a good distraction. I had a gentleman from Ringling come to see me. And he said, Miss Lillian, I see that you are performing on Broadway and you have a great show. And I looked at him and I said, you're late. He said, but, but Miss Leitzel, you, uh, you are great, we'll give you lead billing. And I said, you're late. Where were you? But be before he could actually leave, I decided to accept graciously because I knew that the circus is where I belonged. <laughs> 